بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف First we offer our condolences to Imam Mahdi Ajalallahu ta'ala farajahu sharif for the tragic event of Imam Ali being stricken by Ibn Muljam. Somehow, perhaps, this was a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had in his design that commemoration of the night of Qadr and commemoration of Imam Ali should be together. Revelation of Quran and ascension of the soul of Imam Ali to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is another aspect of Saqalain being together. Inshallah, tonight we want to reflect on istighfar asking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing things that would inshallah lead to being forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the most important thing for us to achieve in the months of Ramadan is forgiveness if we are forgiven then we can hope that other things would come and inshallah would benefit if you are not forgiven, our du'as would not be accepted and also nothing would be useful if you are not forgiven. If you are going to go to hell, then what is the benefit of other things? So this is a haja, this is a request that if Allah gives, then everything else, inshallah, would be coming and would be making sense. If this is not achieved, then we have very, very serious problems. Tonight, what I want to do is not only to talk about istighfar, but also to mention other things that Ahlul Bayt have taught us that they also would lead to the sins being forgiven. And it's very good if we remember and benefit from all of them. So, Everything, inshallah, I'm going to say is based on hadith from Ahlul Bayt. And I hope that, inshallah, you would remember and maybe you can take note. And, inshallah, then we should work on these things so that, inshallah, we make sure that we have many different ways for seeking forgiveness. One of the things that we have in our hadith and it's very important, very fundamental, is that if we have proper aqidah, if we have proper understanding of tawheed, not in a just theoretical sense, if we are a real muwahid, if we believe in theory and also we implement in practice that only Allah is our Lord, this by itself can lead to forgiveness. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَالَّذِي بَعَثَنِي بِالْحَقِّ بَشِيرًا وَنَذِيرًا By the one who has raised me truthfully as a giver of good news and as a warner Allah is not going to punish a real believer into it a real monotheist if someone is real muwahid you know, Rasulullah himself used to say, Qulu la ilaha illallah tuflihu. Is it possible someone who has achieved falah to go to hell? 
Imam Raza alayhi salam said, Kalimatul quoting, of course, Hadith Qudsi, finally from Allah. Kalimatul la ilaha illallah has hisni, faman dakhala hisni, amina adhabi. So if we really achieve Tawheed, if we really believe and take the implications of Tawheed into different corners of our life, we will be forgiven. وَإِنَّ أَهْلَ التَّوْهِيدِ يُشَفَّعُونَ فَيُشَفَّعُونَ Those who are really people of Tawheed, they will receive Shafa'ah. They will receive Shafa'ah. So it means that me and other people who have rights of Shafa'ah will do Shafa'ah for them. So it's very important to improve our understanding of Aqidah, especially our Tawheed, and take its practical implications to our life. So this is a very important point. Another thing is, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. This is the most obvious thing, and we all are more or less familiar with this. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, At-ta'ibu Habibullah. The one who repents is a friend of God. Wa-ta'ibu min al-dhamb kaman la dhambala. The one who returns towards Allah from a sin which he has committed, which has damaged his relation with God, he is returning back to God to restore the damage. He is like a person who has no sin. He's like the one who has no sin. So to go back towards Allah, to do tawbah, to repent, is the second cause for forgiveness. Inshallah, if I have time, I come back to tawbah and talk about it more. If I don't have time, then maybe inshallah another occasion. What is the meaning of tawbah? The third thing which leads to forgiveness is remembrance of Allah. Sins darken our heart. They bring pollution to our heart. Remembrance of Allah removes the dirt and polishes the heart. So it's taking away the impact of the sins. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ma jalasa qawmun. I hope our session, inshallah, is one of the examples of this hadith. Ma jalasa qawmun yadhkuruna Allah. There is no group of people who sit remembering Allah. We are here now remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِلَّا نَادَى بِهِمْ مُنَادٍ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ There is no group of people sitting remembering Allah except someone from heaven will call an angel. We cannot hear right now, but the angel is making the call. Rasulullah has informed us about this, but unfortunately we cannot hear it. We cannot see the angel, we cannot hear the voice. But the call is made. قُومُوا فَقَدْ بَدَّلَ اللَّهُ سَيَّآتِكُمْ حَسَنًا The call is that when you go out from this meeting, stand up while Allah has transformed your bad deeds into good actions. تَبْدِيلُ السَّيَّآتِ بِالْحَسَنًا so a group of people who sit together, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reflect on their relation with Allah, do tawbah, try to improve their relation with Allah. When they want to leave this majlis, inshallah their sins are forgiven and they are actually transformed into good deeds. وَغَفَرَ لَكُمْ جَمِيعًا Allah has forgiven all of you. So inshallah, we have this also in addition to our istighfar as a reason for being forgiven. Another thing is Salatul Layl. Salatul Layl is very important and inshallah, 
at least in the months of Ramadan, we should really try to do Salatul Layl. Salatul Layl is one of the things that is bringing Allah's mercy and love and forgiveness. There is a hadith which says, Inna salat al mu'min fil layl tudhhibu ma amila bin nahar min al sayyat wa When a servant of Allah says salatul layl, does tahajjud, this takes away the sins that he might have done during the day. So salatul layl is very important. Another thing which is very important and always I mention in the nights of Qadr is in the night of Qadr we should be critical of ourselves. We should examine ourselves without any mercy for ourselves. We should be really critical of ourselves and if there is any problem in my behavior, in my akhlaq, I should blame myself and I should try to correct myself. If we come here, you know, and say, Alhamdulillah, I'm a very good person, a very good believer, and just, you know, I come here as a formality. No, this is not going to work. We should come to these majalis with the intention of improving ourselves. And when we go out, we should have made vow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I want to become a better person. If I think that I'm going to be the same person, so what is the point? So you are perfect? If you are perfect, why you are coming here? For sure, everyone has problems. We have problems in our behavior, in our practice, in our treatment of people. We want to use this opportunity to reflect to examine ourselves, if needed, to blame ourselves and make the decision to change ourselves and become a better person. In this way, inshallah, Allah's mercy would be helping us, supporting us. So we shouldn't be here just as a kind of you know, formality. There is a hadith from Imam Raza alayhi salam. Inna rajulan kana fi bani Israel. عبد الله تبارك وتعالى أربعين سنة. In Bani Israel, there was a person who worshipped Allah for forty years. He was a worshipper. He was abid for forty years. But فلم يقبل من. It was not accepted from him. Why he was? It was not accepted from him. From the rest of hadith, you will realize. فَقَالَ لِنَفْسِهِ نَفْسِهِ He said to his soul, he addressed himself. He said, all my problem is coming from you. Means himself. He blamed himself. He said, the reason I am not making progress, the reason my worship is not accepted by Allah is because of my own soul, my own self. Then Allah inspired him, sent a message to him. Look at this. This fact that you blamed yourself now is better than 40 years of ibadah. Because you were worshipping me for 40 years while you were thinking you are a good person. You had self-admiration. You were pleased with yourself. But now that you have blamed yourself, you have realized that you have problem, this is better than that 40 years. So sometimes a person who repents cries over his crimes and sins. This can be better than all years of ibadah. 
Because this is with broken heart. This is with being not pleased with himself. But those years was with Oj, thinking that he's a good person. You know that Hadith Qudsi says, Anin al Mudnabin Ahabu ilayya min tasbih al Musabbahin. When those who have committed sins, they cry. They are sorry and they ask me with tears to forgive them. This is better than the tasbih, the glorification of those who glorify me. I love the cry of a person who repents more than tasbih of those who glorify me. Because this is without any self-admiration. This is very honest. This is very sincere. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a message to this worshiper that your blame is better than 40 years of Ibadah. Another thing that helps in forgiveness and we should do in the months of Ramadan as much as possible in the night of God is Salawat. Salawat is also a very useful means for being forgiven. Again, there is a hadith from Imam Raza alayhi salam. Malam yaqdir ala ma yukaffiru bihi dhunubah falyukthir min as-salat ala muhammadin wa al muhammad. If you are not able to compensate for your sins, if you are not able to do enough to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you feel your life is not enough, the opportunities have been lost, you feel empty handed. Imam Raza says, say salawat as many as possible. فَلْيُكْسِرْ مِنَ السَّلَوَاتِ فَإِنَّهَا تَحْدِمُ الظُّنُوبِ Salawat by itself removes and destroys the sins. Because again, salawat brings light and light removes darkness. So salawat is another thing. The other thing is love for Ahlul Bayt salam. Love for good people. Love for true and close servants of Allah leads to love for Allah, leads to love for piety, leads to change and transformation. If we really love Ahlul Bayt, we try to become like them. Imam Raza salam quoted Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hubbuna Ahlul Bayt yukaffiru dhunub hasanat. Love for Ahlul Bayt leads to forgiveness of the sins and multiplication of good deeds. So we should increase our love for Ahlul Bayt. Another thing that is very helpful to do good actions. If someone has somehow wronged you, you can, you know, understand this if you refer to yourself. If someone has wronged you, then one way to achieve forgiveness from you is to do good things for you. He says salam, he tries to be respectful, he tries, you know, to offer help. So you realize that this person has really regretted and tries to change himself. So one of the things that lead to forgiveness is doing good actions. We can do good actions and we can make also intention for doing good actions. Maybe right now, what can I do right now? Maybe I don't have you know, that much time right now to do anything. But at least in the night of Qadr, before we do our A'mal, before we put Quran on our head, we can make intention 
we can say, oh Allah, I want to spend this money, this much of money on charity. Oh Allah, from tonight I decide to say my salat on time. I decide to do salat on layl. I decide to be very kind to my parents, very kind to my husband, to my wife, my children. I try to help community. So we can make at least intention of doing good things and this leads to forgiveness. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said إِذَا عَمِلْتَ سَيِّئَةً فَعْمَلْ حَسَنَةً تَمْحُوهَا If you, God forbid, commit a bad action, do something good, this would wipe it out. Another thing which is recommended is to go to sajda and to go to the place of ibadah like going to mosque this is also bringing allah's forgiveness imam sadiq salam said to a person sorry imam sadiq salam said that a person went to the prophet and said ya rasulallah kathurat dunubi my sins are a lot but my actions are not enough. I have little good action. Unfortunately, I have sins. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Akthar sujood. Try to be doing more sajda, more frequent and longer sajda. Because sajda is the nearest situation that a person can have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a beautiful hadith which says, Aqrabu ma yakunul abdu min rabbihi. The nearest situation that a servant can have with his Lord is when he is sajid, when he is doing sajda. So Rasulullah said, Aqthar sujood fa innahu yahuttu dhunub kama yahuttu rih when there is a strong wind coming you see it drops all the leaves especially in fall in autumn when the wind comes it drops all the leaves when you go to sajda it drops the sins another thing is wuzu wuzu not only is a prerequisite for salat by itself is also ibadah. Some people think that wuzu is only for salat. No. Wuzu by itself is ibadah. Wuzu by itself is nur. Wuzu by itself makes you nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, it's good to be always with wuzu. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, listen to this beautiful hadith. Man jaddada wuzu'ahu the one who makes a new wuzu not because of salat he has wuzu and then he makes wuzu because he loves wuzu he knows the beauty of wuzu the impact of wuzu Allah also would renew his tawbah without him being in need of doing again istighfar so wuzu by itself leads to being forgiven. So far I have mentioned 10. Number 11. Having in your heart fear. Not fear in the sense of Allah na'uzubillah being frightening. No, fear because of the bad actions you have, you have fear that how you are going to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ma min mu'minin yabki min khashyatillah ta'ala illa ghufra lahu zambuh.
چیز نمیرسه؟ ما من مؤمن یبکی من خشیت الله تعالی الا غفر له ذنبه There is no believer that he has fear and he feels very humble when he thinks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he cries except that his sin is forgiven وَإِنْ كَانَتْ أَكْثَرْ مِنْ نُجُومِ السَّمَاءِ Even if his sins are more than stars of the sky. وَعَدَدِ قَتَرَاتِ الْبِحَارِ Even more than the drops of water in oceans. When Allah sees that a person is honestly trying to change and he is crying, then Allah doesn't ask how many sins you have committed. What have you done in the past? يَغْفَرُ الظُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِمْ لَا تَغْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفَرُ الظُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Those who want to be cheating and deceiving, Allah is very strict with them. For every sin, they have to be giving answer. They have to be questioned, maybe punished. This is for the people who don't want to change. They want to cheat. They say, Astaghfirullah, but it's not honest. But if someone really wants to change, and he is himself blaming himself, he's not waiting for Allah to blame him or question him. He's blaming himself. Then Allah doesn't say, how many sins you have committed? Allah will forgive all his sins. Even if they are more than stars in the sky and drops of water in ocean. Another thing which helps is to have good akhlaq, good temper, good naturedness. If a person is kind, if a person is gentle, he doesn't annoy people, he smiles, he tries to help. People are very happy with him, it's easy going with people. Allah will forgive these people. Husnul khulq is very important. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, And if, inshallah, even this one point, inshallah, if we all together decide to do from tonight, I think then I have made really good achievement. From tonight, we make this, inshallah, determination and this decision, you know, that I want to be a better person. I want to be more kind, more merciful with respect to my family, my friends, my neighbors, everyone. I want to improve my akhlaq. I want to be a loving person, a kind person, not angry person, not aggressive person, not harsh person. If we can change this, this is, inshallah, a very good beginning. And inshallah, our sins will be forgiven if we improve ourselves. But if God forbids, I think that by coming to Majalis and, you know, doing some a'mal and shedding some tears, then I go back and annoy my husband or my wife or my children, my family, my friends. When I go to shop, I cheat people. You know, this is not going to work. Husnul khulq is very important. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna al إن الخلق الحسن يذيب الذنوب كما تذيب الشمس الجمد. Good temper, good akhlaq melts the scenes like sun shining on snow, on ice and melting that. So this is 
the impact of husnul khulq wa innal khulq sayy but if someone has bad temper la yufsidu al amal kama yufsidu al khal al asal it would corrupt your good actions like vinegar corrupting honey if you have best honey but you add vinegar it will corrupt it so if your salat is good your zakat is good you know you do lots of good things but you have bad akhlaq no one wants to be with you everyone is afraid of you this is not good you know the story of the companion of the prophet and how rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself took part in his funeral put him in the grave and you know said salat over his body and his mother said mashallah you have such a honor that rasulullah is you know doing all this you are going to heaven and it said bashara for going to heaven and rasulullah said no he has pressure in grave because of bad akhlaq he was a companion of the prophet prophet was in his funeral and even prophet said that the angels of allah are here in this funeral he put him in the grave but still he is suffering because of his bad akhlaq what we have we don't have prophet with us we don't have angels you know we don't have any those thing we don't have that merit of being a companion of the prophet being one of the people who have took part in all those difficult you know battles we don't have anything and now if we have rasul khulq our situation would be not imaginable another thing is fasting in the months of ramadan especially allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the months of ramadan in every night forgives many many people and then in the last night in the night of eid equal to every uh, person number of every people who have been forgiven he forgives in the last night another thing is martyrdom if inshallah allah gives us the honor to become a martyr become shaheed and one of the duas in the months of ramadan is we ask allah and taj'ala wafati qatlan fi sabilik tahta rayat nabiyyik inshallah if allah gives us this honor to be killed and give our life for his sake whenever he wants martyrdom is also leading to forgiveness a martyr as soon as he is killed his sins are forgiven except haqqun nas rights of people will not be forgiven even for a martyr haqqun nas is different if he owes some money to people if he has wronged some people he has to please them Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ash-shahada tukaffiru kull dhanbin illa dain martyrdom can compensate for all sins except dain when you have debt to people you have given your life but you have still to please people how can you please them when you die either you should give some of your sawab to them to be pleasing them or to take some of their sins so that they are pleased otherwise they are so much in need that they would not say okay you are martyr so we forgive you because everyone is looking for a way to rescue himself so haqqun nas is something that no one can you know play with it no one can you know take it easy Another thing is sadaqa. Especially in the months of Ramadan inshallah we should pay more sadaqa especially in the night of Qadr you know some of the people do very th good things. They make the intention of paying sadaqa for the whole year 
in the night of Qadr. For example, how much sadaqah you are paying in the whole year? I don't know. Maybe it's 100 pounds, maybe 1,000 pounds, maybe 10,000 pounds. People are different. But make the intention in the night of Qadr. And inshallah you will be rewarded more because spending one pound in night of Qadr is 30,000 times multiplied. Saying two raka prayer is 30,000 times multiplied. Every good thing in the night of Qadr, this is hadith. Inshallah, in some night I will explain. Imam Baqir said, the meaning of Laylatul Qadr, Khairun min al is that any good action that you do in Laylatul Qadr, the reward is like doing that action in 30,000 nights. So, if we pay Sadaqah, in this night of Qadr, it's causing Rahmah of Allah and forgiveness and great reward. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Bissadaqatu tamhul khati'ah. Sins are wiped out with sadaqah. Another thing is to visit ill people. If a person is ill, this is an opportunity to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You visit at the ill person and then your sin will be forgiven. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man aada maridhan fajalasa indahu sa'a When you visit an ill person and sit with that ill person for some time, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reward you like 1,000 years. This is the impact of visiting a person who is ill, he feels lonely, he needs, you know, support, he needs, you know, people going and give him hope. Another thing is being patient and go through difficulties and calamities and remain intact not losing your hope not losing your iman this is also very powerful so if god forbid you have illness if you have family problems if you have problem with i don't know children with your work with your business okay it's very difficult very painful but at the same time this can be leading to forgiveness so it's in a sense working in your favor. Imam Raza salam said, Al Maradu Lil Mu'mine Tathirun wa Rahmah. When a moment becomes ill and suffers, this suffering is for him Tathir, purifying him. The sins will be removed. Wa Rahmatun is a source of Rahmah, mercy. And then Imam after some time said, وَإِنَّ الْمَرَضُ لَا يَذَالُ بِالْمُؤْمِنِ حَتَّى لَا يَكُونَ عَلَيْهِ ذَنْبٌ Sometimes this illness remains till no sin is there. The illness continues till he is completely forgiven. And finally, thinking, contemplation. Did you know that even contemplation can lead to forgiveness when you think about your life what you are supposed to do your relation with Allah about your problems your sins how you can serve Imam Zaman this thinking and contemplation by itself is leading to forgiveness Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said al fikro Contemplation is mirror in which hasanat can be reflected and is compensation for sins. So now if you keep all these 20 that I mentioned in your mind, starting with proper aqidah, tawbah, doing all the good actions, improving our akhlaq, blaming ourselves for bad 
akhlaq, bad behavior, and trying to do good, sadaqa, visiting people, helping people, sending salawat. You see that you would not be surprised that a person, no matter how many sins he has, he has done, he can be forgiven. Because these would not leave any pollution, any dirt in the person. The person who goes through this process, you know, like a person who is taking 20 different types of medicines. Each of them is enough. But now imagine if you are taking 20 different. So it's leaving no place. Or for example, a person who is using 20 locks to lock his house, 20 different security arrangements. So it will be safe. So we should try to use all these things, all these techniques in order to make sure that inshallah no sin is remaining and we have inshallah the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with us. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين